Okay, so hi everybody. Today we're going to be doing a lab uh, dealing with conservation of energy. So it is a bit of a follow-up to what we did last week. And we're going to be touching on many of the same concepts and topics from last week. So just to remind you um, of some of those concepts, uh, when we talk about the total mechanical energy of the system, we're talking about the sum of all the kinetic energies and all of the potential energies in that system. We also know that if the system doesn't have friction or air resistance acting on it, um, these are what we more generally would call uh, non-conservative forces. Okay, if, if there aren't these non-conservative forces at work, then the mechanical energy of the system is conserved. But any real system you find out there in the world is going to have some degree of friction and air resistance acting on it. So once you set the system in motion, its mechanical energy is going to decrease over time. Now, in some cases, uh, this decrease in mechanical energy happens very, very rapidly and it's very obvious. Other times it happens very, very slowly. Um, so today we're going to be looking at a system. Uh, we're going to be measuring its initial mechanical energy and we're going to measure its final mechanical energy after it's moved some amount. And we're going to see if we can notice and actually measure any change in that mechanical energy. And then we're going to see what might have happened uh, as the system moved to decrease the mechanical energy. Can we figure out what uh, physical effects were happening that caused the mechanical energy to change over time? So let's take a look at the system we're analyzing here today. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. It basically just consists of a vertically hanging spring, which you see here, and a weight holder. And I put about 400 grams on the weight holder. We're actually going to measure the precise mass uh, using a triple beam scale later, but it's about 400 grams. And we'll start off by putting the weight holder um, right on the spring like this, but we're going to hold it up, okay? So that the spring and the weight holder are just barely making contact. So this will be the initial state of our system. Then I'm going to let the weight holder go. I'm going to allow the, the weight holder to fall down and stretch the spring out. Our goal here is to have the weight holder just barely touch the ground and then bounce back up. Okay, so in other words, I want to set the system up so that when I let it go from this initial state, the weight holder falls to the ground, and then just barely touches it uh, in the final state. Okay, so let's see what happens um, with the way I have it set up right now, when I just let the system go uh, from its initial state. Okay, so notice how um, the weight holder didn't even touch the ground. That means I'm going to have to lower this horizontal support bar down a little bit to get to the right starting line. Okay, so I've, I've lowered the spring quite a bit, as you can see, and um, let's just give it another try. So start by holding the weight holder up so that the hook of the weight holder is just barely touching the spring, and then let it go. Okay, so that time the uh, weight holder actually smacked against the ground. That's not what we want. That means the spring is too low. We have to adjust it until it's just at the right height so that the weight holder just barely touches the ground when we let it go. Okay, so it took a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of a trial and error, but I think I found the right height to set the spring uh, to get this all to work out. So again, the initial state uh, that we should put the system in is the uh, hook of the weight holder is barely touching the spring, just like this. And then if we let it go, it barely touches the floor. So everything is in the right configuration. Okay, so that's basically how the experiment goes, and uh, we're only going to do this one trial. But to complete the experiment, there are a number of measurements that we have to make. So first is, what is the length of the hanging spring? We're going to call this um, L1, by the way. So the length of the hanging spring uh, is, what I'm getting is um, 36. 0.3 centimeters. So 36.3 centimeters is the length of the hanging spring. Okay, so here's the next measurement that we're going to make. We're going to measure the initial height 
relative to the floor of the bottom of the weight holder. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the uh, two meter stick to measure this, and it looks like it's almost exactly uh, a meter, but it's a little bit less than that. Um, so it's about 99.5 centimeters. So let's call this height H1 again. That's the initial height off the floor of the bottom of the weight holder, 99.5 centimeters. Okay, so the next measurement we're going to make is the length of the weight holder itself. So I'll measure that for you real quick. And we're getting about 13.9 centimeters for the length of the weight holder. So let's call this LW, 13.9 centimeters. Okay, here's the next measurement we're going to make. Um, we want to know what the length of the spring is when there's no force applied to it. We sometimes call this the uh, equilibrium length or the natural length. Uh, we're going to use the variable L0 uh, to denote this. We can measure it just by lying uh, the spring flat on the table and measuring the length. And what we have here is about 24.3 centimeters. So L0 or the uh, natural length of the spring is 24.3 centimeters. Okay, next measurement. Let's find the mass of the spring that we were using. So let's use the triple beam scale for this. Looks like it's um, more than 100 grams, but less than 200. So let's fine tune that. And we're almost there. Perfect. Okay, so the mass of the spring is 158.3 uh, grams. So 158.3 grams is the mass of the spring. Okay, so the next thing we're going to measure is what is the mass of these weights that we put at the end of the spring in this experiment? Now, um, according to the manufacturer, this is exactly uh, 400 grams, but I also put some tape at the end of there, which is going to add some mass, and they might not have been manufactured absolutely perfectly, so let's actually just measure the mass directly. We expect it to be right around 400, so let's start there. But as you can see, uh, it's a little bit less than 400. So let's try maybe 399 grams. See how that does. Okay, so it's more than that. So somewhere between 399 and 400 grams is what we're looking at here. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good right there. We can get the scale to balance at uh, 399.8 grams. So the hanging mass is 399.8 grams. So there's one last thing that needs to be measured before we can move on to the calculations, and that is the spring constant of the spring that was used in today's experiment. So I showed you at the beginning of the semester um, an experiment that can be performed to measure the spring constant of any spring, and that is basically to hang the spring vertically, uh, hang some mass from the end, measure how much it stretches out, and then hang some more mass, measure how much it stretches out again, and just keep doing that. And eventually, you can get to a point where you can uh, plot that data on a graph and measure the spring constant directly. Now, we're not gonna go through all of that again. Instead, I'm just gonna tell you the value of K for this spring. So, the spring constant here is 7.550 newtons per meter. So, the value of K for the spring that we used 7.550 newtons per meter. Now with that said, you have all the data you need to do the analysis. So follow along with the worksheet that accompanies the video to do the analysis. Basically it takes you through a step-by-step -step, uh, calculation to measure the initial energy of the system as well as the final energy of the system that you saw in the experiment today. Now what you're going to be doing is looking for any kind of discrepancy between the initial and final energy uh, and try to explain any discrepancy you see using the physics principles that you've known, uh, that you've learned up until this point. So with that said, um, we're done with the experiment today, so I will see you in the next uh, lab video. Until then, take care, be safe out there, see you in the next one.